Good evening, YouTube. You guys are now watching another segment of the Cali Effect. Today, we are going over the Odd Eyes Magician deck profile. And before I go any further, I just wanted to let you guys know this video is brought to you guys by Ultimate Guard. If you want some of the best protection in the entire game uh, for your Yu-Gi-Oh cards, then Ultimate Guard is probably the way to go. But let's get into the deck profile and I'll explain um, as I go. We're going to start off with the three high skills that we play, or three of the four high skills that we play. Three copies of Dragon Pit Magician. Um, Dragon Pit Magician, when you you have another magician in your scale you can discard one card to destroy a spell or trap very essential for getting rid of pesky cards like solemn strike before your opponent can activate them it's also like i said at high scale and it which is extremely important for us to pendulum summon uh next arguably the second best magician card that we have since wisdom eyes at one Dr old dragon magician is extremely good um its first scale effect is that we can add a uh, Magician monsters from our extra deck to our hand and then our second effect is when it's special summon you get to add a magician card from your graveyard to your hand It combos really well with dragon pit magician because normally we can discard a magician Go ahead and special summon the old dragon and then add that same magician back to our hand Next is the mini boss of the deck, Magic Spectre Unicorn, Unicorn Kirin. This card is awesome. Being able to disrupt the opponent on their turn, as well as uh, add Pendulum cards back to our hand that could be vital, such as Magic Spectre Raccoon or Performer Pal Skobat Joker, this card can be deadly. It's it, not only that, the added bonus that it can't be destroyed by card effects once and it can't be targeted, it makes it really, really hard to deal with, even though it is only 2,000 attack. Um, to search it out, we have two copies of Magic Spectre Raccoon Bombonku. Literally, it's genuinely just to search out the Karen, nothing more. Um, so actually, I I've used it to search out itself because in a deck where we play sixes and sevens, having a five scale isn't that bad for your low scale. Um, Raccoon is very vital because Karen is just as vital as well. Uh, next is two copies of Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon. This card is really good. Uh, being a level seven monster, so possible XC or yeah, rank, rank seven plays for XC summons. Um, being a Odd Eyes monster, being able to use you know with Odd Eyes Fusion um, and Noble Dragon Magician, and also just being a really good card in general. It is a searcher at the very worst. You place it in your scale and during your end phase, you can search almost half your deck from your deck to your hand, um, then special summon it for later use. Uh, two copies of Magical Abductor. This card is awesome. Basically, it rewards you for playing the Pendulum Mechanic, and then um, it also rewards you even further for playing Sky Iris. Uh, if it's in your pin scale, we don't necessarily use the monster effect. And when you you can, every time you activate a spell card, you get a spell counter on it. When you get three, you get the Search of Pendulum card. So free searches for days. Two copies of Archfiend Eccentric. Archfiend Eccentric is very good. Um, being an Exile Force and a Mystical Space Typhoon in the form of a Searchable Pendulum Monster you know it tends to take the cake not only that it is a seven scale from when our eight scales aren't available so it does allow us to play some pendulum cards such as uh, our lower scale monsters that are six and under so this card is really good and at the very worst it's so much spot removal and it's a constant exile force if you have the right scales next is two copies of miss valley apex avion um this card can be an outright blowout if you summon multiple copies with Kirins, mainly because it can negate the activation of spell trap and monster effects. 2700 beater and we can always just pin summon it back again. Two copies of Maxi. Um, in my earlier video, I said that I wanted to play three or zero Maxi, which isn't always necessarily true. In this specific deck, I don't want to draw and go first and open with a clog of Maxis, but then at the same time, I still want to have the benefits of having Maxi in my hand when my opponent starts to special summon. One copy of Wisdom Mind Magician. To be honest with you guys, I didn't even know I was playing it. I, I in, in the Dev Pro Duels that you guys seen before, I was not playing it. And I completely forgot about it. Now, that doesn't mean that it's a bad card. It's an amazing card. Being able to search any magician from our scales, it just shows how much the deck has evolved without it. Um, it it's a really awesome card. You never use this monster effect. You always use this pin, pin effect to search other magicians to your scale. Uh, one copy of Performer Power Odd Eyes Unicorn. This card's awesome. Uh, mainly because it's searchable through Sky Iris. It's an Odd Eyes target for Odd Eyes Fusion. And it's an 8 scale. So those are really, really good credentials that this card has on it. Uh, one copy of Dragon Pulse Magician. Um, this magician, a lot of people opted to drop. I keep it mainly because of the Notoria Beast Lock. It is a searchable earth monster that can be special summoned, and then you combo it with Glow of Bulb, and you know, you're, you're, you got a Notoria Beast, which is a great out to Monarchs. Um, also, another thing is that if it's in your scale, you get to destroy your opponent's monsters. Something that Monarchs, you know, you would want to destroy because 
tribute summon monsters are on the field. So get rid of the tribute summon monsters so you can start, you know, special summoning from your extra deck. Um, Zang Magician, this card's awesome. Um, it allows me to go into some really sick combos, but I like it actually more for his monster effect. Um, being able to negate a light monster, there's Idea, uh, there's Aether, uh, there's just a plethora of pretty good light monsters that need to activate their effect on the field, and Jang Magician just said completely says no to them. One copy of Performer Pal Odd Eyes Light Phoenix, the searchable low scale for Sky Iris, literally, that's all you need to know about it. Um, Performer Pal Monkey Board, that's gonna really just combo up with the Performer Pal engine. Uh, Monkey Board normally searches Skullbat Joker, but it can search Performer Pal Odd Eyes Light Phoenix or Unicorn for, you know, certain situations. The Skullbat Joker, I mean, it's obvious it searches just about any Pendulum card that we play in the deck. Luster Pin, I wasn't excited about this card, um, specifically in this deck, mainly because it's so hard to make some of the Luster targets, and you're forced to play the, all of the Luster targets. But the awesome thing about it is that Ignister is too good to ignore. Being able to instantly out Cosmos or just almost any situation, I felt that it was almost mandatory to play the Luster Pendulum. One copy of Noble Dragon Magician, um, this is a love-hate card. It has so many combos with Odd Eyes or yeah, with Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon. But then at the same time, it's like it, it, it has. Let's just say if you're searching Odd Eyes right, then it's great. But if you're like dead drawing it, it's always a card to activate for magical duck during your scale, and then it immediately gets destroyed. So that's not bad either. Um, and last for monsters is one copy of Glow Bulb. Uh, Glow Bulb is easy for the Notoria Beast Lock. It allows you to make eights. It allows you to make sevens. It does a lot of great things in there. Uh, on to spells. Uh, three copies of Pendulum Call. Uh, vital for the Pendulum deck because it searches your magicians. This is probably the best spell card in this deck. Uh, two copies of Sky Iris. Uh, Sky Iris allows you to destroy your own Pendulum cards that will eventually be Pendulum summoned back again to search Odd Eyes cards that you probably need at that given time. One copy of Terraforming because three copies of Sky Iris is bad. More than one copy of Terraforming wasn't that good. <laughs> Uh, one copy of Odd Eyes Fusion. I opted for one instead of two because mainly because of extra deck room. Secondly, you really only need to resolve it once. Uh, Foolish Burial, Raigeki, those are pretty obvious. Foolish Burial to send necessary cards, Raigeki to blow up boards, especially against a Monarch matchup. And then Summoner's Art because adding that uh, Dragon Pit Magician or Dragon, yeah, Dragon Pit Magician to your hand could be very essential. And sometimes you just need uh, that fourth card to search it. That's it for the main board. I'm excited to get you guys to the extra deck. For the extra deck, we have a lot of exciting cards in here. Um, I think I'm gonna start off with the fusions with Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon. It's the card that we use to go into the, um, into with the Odd Eyes Fusion, my apologies. Uh, it, ban it bounces face up attack position special summon monsters, but its most important effect is that I can shuffle cards from my extra deck to my deck to negate the effect of cards. So it's pretty good. 3000 defense, 2500 attack, really good monster in itself. Uh, one copy of Dynaster. Um, Dynaster is really good. <laughs> really, really good. Um, it's better in other Pendulum decks when we don't have instant built-in protection, but it's still really good just because it can special summon the Luster Pendulum from Graveyard, and it can protect our scales when we don't Pendulum call. Um, Ignister, easily one of the best synchros in the game. Um, the card that I've been talking about because of it, it's, it's too good to pass up. If you pay Pendulums, you should probably be playing this card because it's that good. One copy of Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend. Um, I, I like this card. I think it's I think it's essentially really it's just awesome, right? Being able to clear boards and inflict damage to your opponent and then you can still attack. I mean, I, I don't understand why this card isn't 50 bucks in itself. Uh, one copy of Clear Wing. Uh, clear Wing is awesome against the Monarch matchup because you can negate their monsters effects and it gets pretty nasty. So um, it, it's our version of Crystal Wing, except we can actually make it. Uh, Odd Eyes Meteor Burst Dragon. Uh, Armadus in the battle phase, so that's always awesome. Um, and then it helps with a lot of combos when we're, you know, we're trying to go into extra XC summons um, and bringing out multiple cards. Uh, and of course the Naturia Beast because, you know, Naturia Beast lock because that's how it is. On to the Exceeds, uh, Odd Eyes Rebellion Dragon. 
This is actually essential for, for making Odd Eyes Fusion. When your opponent controls uh, two or more monsters and you control no monsters, I believe, uh, you can start sending Odd Eyes Rebellion Dragon from your deck to special, to special summon the, the Vortex Dragon. It's almost essential for that same reason. Um, it's When you summon it using Odd Eyes, it's even more amazing. So it's just a great card in total. Uh, Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon. There's times where you can knock your opponent down to you know quite a significant amount of damage, 1500 damage, and then you make this card. And you say, hey, if you play more than two moves and it's in the one of the not getting rid of Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon, then you know it's probably going to be game. One Odd, Odd Eyes Absolute. This card is awesome. Being able to negate monsters' attacks, but then even furthermore, being able to special summon uh, Odd Eyes monsters from your graveyard, and then it's from when it's removed, you can automatically just special summon the four Vortex Dragon yourself. So this card's really good. Uh, instead of uh, Naruto the Moral Leader, I'm playing Number 30, 39 Utopia Beyond. Um, it's a really good out to a lot of Cosmo ships. If your opponent has a lot, you summon beyond, all their monsters become zero. You don't really care about them, special summoning other monsters, because you're about to wreck their life points just by summoning this card. They're gonna take at least 3,000. Uh, one Abyss Dweller, one Castell, and then the Magister, the Ascending Draco Slayer, all awesome cards, uh, pretty mandatory, especially if you're running the Luster Pen, this is pretty mandatory. And then Phantom Knight Breaksword, I run a, quite a few threes, and I felt that Breaksword was the best uh, three out. That is it for the main deck, or for the extra deck. Now we can get on to the side deck. For side deck, I'm still using a modified version of the Principle of Five. Uh, for the Principle of Five, let's get this video to 200 likes, because I know you guys can do it, and you know, we'll start to get that video done. Uh, three copies of Kaiju Gamma Seal and two copies of Chaos Trap Hole. That is my Cosmo matchup. Going first, I run the Chaos Trap Holes. Going second, I run the Kaiju Gamma Seals. Um, the Gamma Seals get over the Dark Ships because, you know, that's like their biggest things. Sometimes you even use it just to, you know, tribute their Tin Can because you know what they're going to do with the Tin Can. Um, it also gets over problematic that so like if, you're, if I'm playing Fire King Cosmo and they go Cyber Dragon Infinity, Dark Lady. More often than not, I just have to tribute the Cyber Dragon Infinity, activate my Dragon Pit, activate another Magician in the Scale, and then, you know, I'm pretty much golden. Or Dragon Pulse and then another Magician in the Scale and I'm good. Um... For Burning Abyss, the two Flying C, the one Max C, um, that's if I'm going second. Uh, then the Chaos Trap holds back in again if I'm going first. Uh, Burning Abyss isn't really a hard matchup at all in this deck. Um, granted, they do make a lot of great boards, but I, I mean, as long as I'm still drawing cards, as long as I can prevent their special summons or stop, you know, certain cards like Beatrice and stuff, uh, it shouldn't be that hard. Uh, for the Monarch matchup, uh, two copies of Masquerade Strict from when I'm going first. Two copies of an Effect Veiler. Um, dependent, I'm either running a Twin Twister or a Chaos Trap Hole. Heavily dependent on, you know, what they're playing, whether it's Extra Deck Monarch or, you know, if it's uh, regular Monarchs. Uh, it, it, all, it all varies. Um, it's pretty much it. If I'm going first, um, I'm probably going to do something like this. And if I'm going second, that normally works. So, or sometimes I actually do throw in the Mask of Restrict still because, you know, it is what it is. I can always break their board and set the Mask of Restrict. Um, for all of those annoying decks that play a lot of back row, I have to take some serious consideration. So instead of running the third Mask of Restrict, I just decided to go three Twin Twisters. I've already have the Eccentric Arch Fiends, the Dragon Pits. I thought that three Twin Twisters would be uh, good enough for me to get rid of all of their pesky back row cards. Um, that is it for the main side and extra. Now I can get you guys into the combo tutorial because... You guys have seen so many combo tutorials with this deck. Alright guys, you guys have seen almost every combo tutorial under the sun in this deck. Today I'm just going to be showing you some perfect hand combo tutorials because, you know, it's not really much else I can do after that. Um, first I'm going to activate Magical Abductor and Soda Scale. And then I'm going to activate the effects of Pendulum Call. The Pendulum Call is going to first add a counter to Magical Abductor. But I'm going to discard Global. And then with that I'm going to add two Magician cards. One being Dragon Pit, the other one being Dragon Pulse. So I'm gonna say that this is your hand right here. Sweet, that's awesome. So now you have one counter on Magical Abductor and uh, Pendulum Call in your graveyard. So let me push your graveyard right here. Uh, you have two counters when you activate, sure, we'll go Magic Specter Garen because we're that guy. And then three counters with the Sky Iris because you know, Sky Iris is love and Sky Iris is life. It would actually been better if we can go ahead and take out the Magic Specter Garen and we're just gonna put Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon, sure. That's gonna be good. We're not gonna activate its insight phase effect because we're gonna quickly go ahead and activate the effects of Sky Iris, destroying the uh, Odd Eyes to add. Gee, you won't believe what we're adding, guys. Odd Eyes Fusion. This is, like I'm saying, this is gonna get nastier and nastier by the second. Next, we're gonna go ahead and activate Dragon Pit Magician. Can we Pendulum Summon? Yeah, we'll go ahead and Pendulum Summon. We'll Pendulum Summon for two. 
Oops, that's obviously not it. Oh, my apologies. I was wondering what was going on. We're going to activate the effect of Magical Abductor before we Pendulum Summon. My apologies, guys. Well, Magical Abductor, we're going to go ahead and search Magic Specter Raccoon Bumbuku. We're going to summon the Bumbuku and activate his effect. Now, Bumbuku is going to go ahead and search us, of course, the Kirin. That's what was going on. I was like, I'm missing something. Now we're going to Pendulum Summon. And with Pendulum Summon, we're going to go ahead and Pendulum Summon 3. Now, apparently, we're going first because we have five cards in our hand. Perfectly fine. We're going to use the effect of Glow Bolt to send the top card of our deck to the graveyard. Gee, it's a Sky Iris. And now we have a lot of plays. We're going to Synchro Summon with the Dragon Pit and the Glow Bolt. That's going to give us Notoria Beast. Where's that Notoria Beast? Then we're going to activate the Odd Eyes Fusion. And that's going to fuse these two lucky guys. And that's going to give us the Odd Eyes Vortex. So now we just have negation for days. And we have control through Magic Spectre Karen. Look. Essentially, anytime you can establish a board uh, with Magical Abductor and activate three spell counters, it, it's going to be really, really good for you and probably hard for your opponent to overcome. Uh, I, I can go forever about Magical Abductor, but I think I'm going to wrap it up right here since the video is already so long. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, 200 likes and we can get, you know, to the principle of five. Really hope you guys appreciated this uh, deck profile. Please like, comment, subscribe, but most of all, enjoy.